And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Thresh Deep. So we're going to be playing a different version of a deep deck. This one kind of focused on having Thresh in play and leveling up Thresh. And of course having Thresh then bring Nautilus alongside because whenever you have your leveled up Thresh in attack, you can summon another attacking champion. So we're gonna have a little bit of a different version of deep. So instead of just playing all the regular old um, toss units, which we still have a lot of them in here, but instead of just playing those and then playing some like removal spells and then playing, you know, your, your deep units, you know, like your tried and true kind of deep deck, we wanna take a different spin on it with this being a thresh deck. Because in order to have thresh level up, we need to see six units die. And so, and so therefore, we're going to play some cards that like really allow units to die. We're going to have Blighted Caretakers in here, which you know kills an ally, summons two saplings. Those both die. That halfway levels up a Thresh by itself. We're going to have that. We're going to have Curse Keeper in here. We're going to have some Fortune Croakers that can also kill your Curse Keeper, give you the card advantage, get you some more bodies in play. Um, Jaw Hunters, of course, that's in a normal deep deck, but this is great with... Uh, Thresh usually usually means two deaths whenever you play Jaw Hunters because it's going to challenge something and kill something else and it will die itself. Um, so you know, like we're going to be able to play like a, a smaller game here and have like some other good like Shadow Isles aggressive aspects to our deck with Curse Keeper and Blighted Caretaker and not just rely on only the deep um, sea monsters, right? Like not just rely on the sea monsters at the top end, but you know be able to play like a pretty good game besides that. We'll even have Stalking Shadows in here that, you know, works really well with Dredge Dredgers and, and uh, Dead Bloom Wanderer and that kind of stuff, but then can also work well with your Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker, and Fortune Croaker drawing cards. So this could this is going to be a pretty interesting uh, deck. And then as far as interaction, there's really just a lot of good interaction spells, and I kind of wanted a nice variety. So we're going to have one of... All of these so we're gonna have like one vile feast one black spear because you know, like sometimes you got to kill like draven and ezreal and jinx and misfortune and you don't want to spend a ton of mana to do that and so black spear can help do that um vile feast of course can help kill your curse keeper but then it can also be a body like a spiderling for like a blighted caretaker so we got one of each of those we got a grass the undying again just a more a more um reliable way to get rid of one of those three health champions um, a Withering Whale for the aggro decks, they're going wide. Atrocity to sacrifice like your 13-13 Nautilus to finish games out. And a Vengeance for your Leesons and, uh, you know, Fioras and all that kind of stuff that you need a hard removal spell. So we got kind of one of each. <clears throat> now, um, that does mean that, like, we can toss that. You know, like, we are a toss deck, right? Like, they, all those cards can get tossed. So it's possible we toss all those cards, but of course, if, if we would toss them, we weren't going to draw them anyway. But that does give us like some different um, options of cards to draw. So this is basically a deep deck with a pretty sweet early game. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's go play our five games in ranked. Zoe Aurelian Soul. All right. Mulligan, Mulligan, Mulligan. Like, Withering Whale, I guess, kills Zoe, but we can probably find a better, more efficient way to kill a Zoe than that. Oh, girl. What are you doing, puppy? Alright, so we got a good hand. What do y'all think? Thorny Toad or Fortune Croaker on turn two? Could also go Curse Keeper and then go Fortune Croaker after that. Cause, But like, I think I probably want to play Wanderer or Slaughter Docks turn three. So actually, you know what? Let's go the Thorny Toad. Then turn three, we play either Slaughter Docks or Dead Bloom Wanderer. I guess Slaughter Docks. And then turn four, I can go Curse Keeper plus Fortune Croaker. I can play both of these double spell on turn four. Yes. <laughs> 
another spark. I don't change fate if I can see it. Drew another curse keeper. Good morning, Skew. We're currently playing your deck. With Thresh Deep. There's a Thresh. Justice will be served! It obviously doesn't take them this long to decide to pass the turn. So it's, it's not like they are. It's not like they're taking that long to, to decide what to do. They're just not focused on playing, they're doing something else while playing. Alright, so we're five away from deep. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty sparkle fly. We've had three units die so far. We're three away from deep. This is going to be very difficult to defeat this Grand Plaza. This, this, you know, could allow me to grasp the Undying, this Eclipse Dragon. One card away from Nautilus, so we can play we can play Nautilus next turn after they attack. It may not be that bad to just simply attack like this. Uh, they block there, block there. Oh, yes. she does love I guess we can kind of see what they do. Alright, so we're going to Um Ooh. I'm surprised they passed, because, like, so basically, we're incentivizing them to play units on this turn to block, which means they're not playing stuff to challenge, so that's good for me. Yeah, you were saying, yeah, you're... Alright, so, are they going to want to play something now? Uh... I guess that makes sense how they played the other Radiant Guardian earlier. Smallest unit we could grab. These are kind of games. Oh, there we go. We're playing something. They're playing something. Cosmic Rays. Oh. 
I was gonna say that these are the kind of games that make you wish that you could just um, add like have like make sure you don't play against an opponent again, kind of thing. Because we just got to round ten and it's been twenty minutes. <laughs> already been 20 minutes with how much time they've spent between turns. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. So of course my plan was to like blighted caretaker kill this jaw hunters and then um you know, have like the the two small two ones challenge these and have like my 1313 nautilus and like these other things hit them Vogue cards are pretty good. Vogue cards are pretty good. I'm not sure if that's worth it. Gives them more room to play other stuff. Right now they have five of their six spots taken up. It spends a lot of mana for me. Maybe not. Blood and guts, golden glory. So Terror of the Tides will cost four. It'll be seven. Alright, so they won't be able to block with any of those things because these are all fearsome. And then if, if their plan is like judgment, A, it doesn't do anything, but B, I'll have Grass the Undying. Hold back the darkness. That's still 14 damage to them first. That's still 14 damage to them first. I should have had Nautilus last. I should have had seven, seven, then eight, then Nautilus. I guess I didn't. I didn't really consider this plan of action. I don't think we ever burned Atrocity, did we? So we know we have two Thresh and one Nautilus left. Yeah. 
No, you, you cannot actually cast Grasp the Undying targeting the Nexus, no. Yeah, Black Magic, that could definitely be something they could improve. It, it's basically impossible to... Yeah, because I... Even trying to scroll up through here, it's basically impossible. Because it also auto-scrolls auto down. So, like, while I'm scrolling, they play a card, it goes all the way back down to the, the bottom. And so, yeah, it's, it's basically impossible to, to figure out what I've actually played so far this game and, like, what's been tossed. It's, it's kind of impossible to figure out. Oh, there was the... Okay, the atrocity was tossed. Okay, we did toss... We did toss the atrocity. Well, that's good to know. I can't play both of these, can I? I can't go Devour and also Grasp. My spirit shines. <sighs> Fresh is worth at least twice as much. Yeah, I, I agree, they're Mind Splitter. Alright, hopefully opponent's a little bit better at playing timely than our previous one. I think our hand's actually pretty good. I know, like, I don't have anything right now for Fortune Croaker, but that's what our draw step's for. Yuck. It's always just, like, the worst case scenario against the Zoe decks, like, if they have the turn one Zoe, which I guess is pretty frequent. That's where it becomes quite messy. But he, basically, I was thinking that even if I don't play the Fortune Croaker on turn two, saving three spell mana for being a Vengeance deck is also something that's not bad either. Looking for both Equinox or the Sun card. Looks like they found one pretty fast. I'm honestly surprised that worked. This is my other puppy dog, Harvey. See, that's her scratching the chair whenever I stop petting her. That's how she scratches the chair. Comes to the other side. <laughs> Are you a space doggy? So that's that's why I'm like always kind of leaning like this. I'm always, I'm like petting. I pet her most of the time during the stream. You a space doggy? We got ten cards. Lots of cards. Force is meaningless without skill. You're meaningless without skill. Remember back when Lee Sin was a 3-4? And you could draw hunters, challenge it. 
Those were the days. So many Devour Depths everywhere. We just uh, tossed to Devour the Depths, so they're probably thinking, okay, well that means they probably don't have any Devour the Depths in hand if they just tossed two of them. Joke's on you. You pay, I talk to spirits. These are my rules. Is that gonna be? It's only number two. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. Our enemies would be foolish to underestimate. So yeah, I mean, I really definitely think they were keeping up Deny or Bastion. Um, so I didn't go for a vengeance. Yeah, like, that's what they were doing. My lands, prepare yourself. At least it's not over. Uh, it's not leveled up yet, so you know, like that overwhelm, you know, like, didn't do a ton of damage to me yet. Give me the stuff. Stuff make happy. I think I want to get rid of the spell shield. Does it get rid of the spell shield? Actually, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it doesn't get rid of spell shield. No, it does not get rid of spell shield. Okay. So we need to do it to this one. I was thinking I'd still just get rid of the spell shield, even though both had seven, but I, I guess not. Oh, so you're saying I can't even target it? Because they're both at seven? We just have infinite devour the depths. Conflict is all in the mind. Sorry, dogs went crazy. Sorry about that. All right, what are we doing here? Challenging. Oh, wait, they got this 5-7. I see every move. You cannot win. Yeah, I, d I don't really see us... I, I... I imagine that this Lee Sin's just gonna kill us next turn, like with the Bastion and everything. I'm sure they probably have like a denial, so I I don't really see any outcome besides them killing us with Lee Sin this next turn. You cannot win. Just can't stop that card. You cannot win. They had a good hand, you know, like that's their deck, right? Like if they have like the you know the Lee Sin that they get to protect and also give it overwhelm, they win. That's that's what their deck's designed to do. Hey. Oh. 
I just don't have any cheap way to blow up this bastion, but even if I did, they probably have deny. So I hope they don't have deny. Is our only way to possibly win this is to get rid of our blocker? No, yeah, they they had that. They just had it all. They're just sitting on deny and bastion the whole time. Sorry, there's like somebody that has to drive like really loud motorcycles in the neighborhood for some reason, and so obviously the dogs are going to be barking at that. You're welcome, Skew. Hey, good luck on the interview. Your dogs bark at pigeons outside your house. Yeah, they they maybe bark at pigeons. If pigeons are outside, but it's just somebody with a loud motorcycle driving around. It's obnoxious. Oh, as well. Dragon said Lee Sin's always unfun to play against. Yeah, it's it's not. Just Lee, Lee Sin. Lee Sin's not a fun card to play against. Um, it's hard to design every single card to be, especially champions, it's hard to design them to be fun to play against, though. Every single card, like whenever you're playing a champion that's doing its thing and winning. It's hard to design them to be able to do their thing and be awesome and also be fun to play against. But So not every single one's going to be. Lee Sin's just not one that's just not fun, but oh well. Um, between that game and then our, our previous game, even though that we won with our opponent, you know, it's spending 30 minutes playing that that first game, taking all the time between the decisions. Haven't had the most fun last two games. Yeah, so the music is board dependent. So each board has different music. So I can go the caretaker and try to take down the bot and the sparkle fly, or I can go jaw hunters and try to take down the Zoe. I'm kind of thinking Caretaker. Caretaker makes, like, my Devour the Depths a lot better, too. I could just, like, Caretaker the Zoe, but then... No, I'm gonna go this Jaw Hunters. Yeah, I would agree it's not it's not necessarily super easy to play Lee Sin because but yeah, I, I also agree with the other person who said that Targon has made Lee Sin too easy to level. Yeah, Tar Targon just gives you tons and tons of spells, for sure. Um, but it's not also easy to play a deck with a whole lot of cheap spells because of like how to sequence all of those is is not the easiest thing as just you know, play your one mana unit on turn one and your two mana one on turn two and your three mana on turn three. I agree with both of those sentiments. We'll see who feasts tonight. It's not too difficult for them to stop this devourer, but I'm going to 
I'm gonna force them to have something that stops the devourer. We're gonna do our best here, but it's not looking good. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. <laughs> yeah, they, they've really added in a whole bunch of elusives recently, especially this last set. I mean, just look at all of these. These are all brand new elusives from the last expansion. They grow up so fast. And I can't just pass the turn. Because they're going to have lethal. I would prefer to have my Jaw Hunters challenge the Zoe. But then again, if I do that, then they're keeping uh, two things alive. And I can't really afford that to happen. Unless we draw, that's not gonna do it. Do we need like vengeance? Yeah, elusives are good. Oh, will it be three games in a row with our opponent playing turn one, Zoe? Maybe. No attack token on turn one. That means no attack token on turn three. Yay, not turn one Zoe. They're playing Zoe, Aurelian Soul, Leona. Our fourth, what did we play the first round when our opponent didn't do, they were playing Grand Plaza, like they were also playing Grand Plaza. I think they were playing Zoe. I think this is our fourth Zoe deck. This is definitely our fourth Targon Invoke deck. But I think it's our fourth Zoe deck also. I don't exactly remember the... I don't remember the exact champions my opponent had the first game. Yeah, I think it was Zoe really in Soul. I, I agree. I think that's what it was. My plan here is play Slaughter Dogs, they challenge something. I then Black Spear. And then next turn I have, you know, Fortune Croaker plus Caretaker. Could he use just just cast vengeance instead of those two? Certainly possible that just vengeance would have been a better outcome. Danger paid. 
I'm not sure though. We will not suffer unbelievers. They will not escape punishment. Ship recorder is going to be a good one. Those treasures can be very useful. That's the wrong card to do that on, isn't it? I mean, just looking just looking at my board, I have a 2-1 that challenges that that still kills it. Like the 4-4, I can challenge with the 4-1, but... You know, if it was a 6-5, I could have challenged it and kill it. So that Zenith Blade should have been created, I don't know if it tells us, it doesn't tell us, but it should have been created by, um, that should be the, yeah, because this wasn't it either. That should be the card that the Robin created. Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Okay, let's go find those treasures. I've become who I was always meant to be. Targon and the Grand Plaza, completely fair. Trust your heart. Seven here. For silver, I talk for gold, I listen. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with this. It was my heart that led me here. Meant to be. So we're at nine, this can only do seven. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. Wow, yeah, that was a great draw. I guess I should have replaced the Fortune Croaker with the Dredge Dredgers last turn with that one mana. Just so that I could have the burst speed plus three plus three right away, but you'd have to assume, and you can see it from this, you'd have to assume that they're gonna play stuff before combat. But yeah, I should have just done that because then I could lead with Nautilus. Alright, this is looking good. We still have six mana. My plan is play this, be able to open attack. They don't get to block with anything. They have to like use a whole bunch of mana, pale cascades, all that kind of stuff, but still difficult to keep themselves alive. I uh yuck. I was going to say, the, the five mana um, card is what I was kind of playing around the Star Spring. The, or the five mana card that heals, heals their Nexus for five. So playing around by not casting Atrocity. Still have Atrocity available.
stop. Not a great treasure trove, but all I gotta do is get them to spend the rest of their mana. My journey ends. So they're down to two mana. All right, how do they stop? I guess hush. No, hush doesn't stop. Let my stars guide all travelers onward. I don't think they can stop an atrocity with two mana. Single combat doesn't work. Should be game. And there we go. All right, two and two. Our Thresh deep deck coming back. So can we get the last win and finish with all three, three and two decks today? All right, Draven Ezreal. Puppy. We're gonna take the Fortune Croaker that can be some card advantage for us in this matchup. Yeah, this would be a really good win if we can get this and then have them all be three and twos. That'd be really nice. Happy that there's no champion. I'm not too happy about that, though. I guess we're just going double fortune croaker and draw one card. We can assume they have like a get excited, right? Like they want me to block with the thresh and then get excited. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Instead, that's three things that have died. And now I can use Blighted Caretaker the next turn for another three things, so we can have a leveled up Thresh the turn after. I'll play this first to kind of distract them from killing my Thresh. The 
and Probulator deals six. Come on. Come on, son. Really? I just had the rummage for... You know, the rummage for, like, the two spinning axes they had, and then a probulator deal six. On turn six. They'd already played that many three mana cards. Coming right up. Give them a chance! So I'm seven away from deep still. My beautiful face. <sighs> Time for a true display of skill. All right, so where are we? We are six away from deep. So we're six away. So Devourer would be better once we get to deep. Okay, so this after we take this card, we're going to be five away, and then I played Wanderer, so it's still not even, like... So that'll be better for later, but Dredgers, like, gets me to deep right now. Where I could go, like, Dredgers, Dredgers, Devourer. I guess I do that. I guess I can't act anymore. No, to Toto's the worst of the options. It's definitely the other. It's either the Devourer or the... Or the Dredgers. Whether we, we, whether we want it to be better. Like, Devourers would be better in, like, three turns. But Dredgers is better this turn. Oh, why did I think... Why did I think I had enough mana to do both of those and Devourer? Oh, well... Okay, maybe it should have just been Dredgers. I thought I had enough mana to do all of that. Sure. Obviously I didn't. I had seven mana, and I was thinking that I could play two one mana things plus a six mana thing with seven mana. I don't miss. Well, Curse Keeper is the absolute Curse worst Keeper. possible draw step in the deck. Yeah, I don't I don't have that command, Gooba. It's Draven time. There's that get excited that we knew about from earlier. From whenever you know, they've had that for a very long time from whenever they attacked their Draven into my Thresh. I'm so good, I surprised myself! That's a good draw. Go, Devourers, go!
Alright, so they're tapped out. I think I'm going to atrocity my 1-1 one, one Curse Keeper and kill their 4-1, and then I have the 4-3. Which probably means we're going to draw Curse Keeper. Or sorry, uh, Blighty Caretaker. Probably means we're going to draw Blighty Caretaker. I wanted to, you know, I liked being able to do that while they couldn't use a removal spell. Of the depths is killing it for me. What are these other two cards they got in hand? It's like Mystic Shots or something. Golden Glory. What else they got? Something else I can devour. We'll see who feast tonight. Devour OP. So I've already used my Atrocity, that's the only card that I have that deals direct Nexus damage. Don't blink. That was the one card that could kill me. It's not bragging if you can back it up. Nailed it. You know, Grass the Undying doesn't kill the 2-4 Ezreal, doesn't even kill like my Thorny Toad to have me heal an extra 2. Open attack. There we go. Quanta just concedes. Open attack was gonna do it. And that and there we go. We got it done. We came back for the winning record yet again. Um all three of our decks. We were down we were like one and two and then won our last two to finish up three and two. So all three of our decks, we got 60% win rates with some certainly non-meta decks right like we were not playing the most powerful decks today that's for sure but we we're playing some some different decks some cool ones that were donation decks and uh you know we're in the highest rank the master's rank and we ended up getting a winning record with all three decks so very good successful day today a three two day don't take that you can't you won't go broke if you're taking a profit so just keep on doing that all right, so that was our Thresh deep deck. Was Thresh better than Maokai? Hard to say. Probably not, but um, I don't know. Hard to say. We did get to do some cool things with Thresh, and like it was like Thresh was just a, a card that um, our opponents were using a lot of resources on our Thresh. And that was slowing them down, how they are using a bunch of re resources on this six health champion. And while they were doing that, then we were setting up. Um, certainly the MVP of those games was Devour of the Depths. This was definitely the MVP best card in our deck. Um, we had, you know, the three of them here. We were frequently making them with Jaw Hunters as well, which made our life even better. So we had really had access to more than three of them. 
Um, but even just like this early stuff, like Blighted Caretaker did really good. Like it kind of shows like why Maokai is good in here, except for Blighted, Blighted Caretaker is, you know, like a, a faster payoff of getting those saplings, you know, having like the multiple ch saplings challenging and then attacking with other like sea monsters and other big things is a very powerful thing. And, and we had that with like the fearsome, right? Like a couple of times our Jaw Hunters were making the eight mana fearsome tear of the tides. And that was helping out with having Caretaker and saplings challenge the, um, things that could block our fearsomes. So that was pretty cool too. So I like this version. I think that, I think this version kind of worked out pretty well of like having like all this early stuff and, you know, just having like these uh, early things that were kind of distracting our opponent and then boom, bunch of devour the depths at the top end and atrocity to finish them out. Worked out well. All right, so that's it for Thresh Deep. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you think about a Thresh Deep deck in, uh, as opposed to a Maokai Deep deck. What did you think? Uh, were you pressed with Thresh? And just the other um, things that we we're doing here with these cheaper units. Um, yeah, love to hear that feedback. All right, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.